It's no secret that Mercedes-Benz is not only one of the most recognizable and significant car manufacturers for enthusiasts worldwide, but also intrinsically linked to the very concept of the automobile. This association is justified, particularly by the historical significance of the brand. On January 29, 1886, German engineer Carl Benz officially filed a patent for a vehicle powered by a gas engine, marking his place as the first person in history to introduce fundamentally the concept of the automobile. Since then, patent number 37435, belonging to the unassuming engineer and innovator Benz, has signified the start of an entire era. Of course, Benz's invention was markedly different from the modern image of a car. In essence, he fitted an engine, which he developed from scratch, onto a three-wheeled bicycle. But as is widely acknowledged, everything starts small, and Mercedes-Benz was no exception. Today, we will delve into the birth of the automobile manufacturing legend and explore how Mercedes has managed to sustain its position among the leading brands in the automotive industry for so long. As mentioned earlier, the official journey of Mercedes-Benz began in 1886, but the groundwork for this iconic brand was laid earlier, specifically in 1871, when Carl Benz and his partner established a mechanical workshop in Mannheim. It was through a process of trial and error that they pioneered automotive development. Before achieving the milestone of creating the first gasoline-powered engine, Benz embarked on an extensive journey of innovation and persistence. Carl Friedrich Benz was born on November 25, 1844, in a place then known as baden mielburg now part of the city of Karlsruhe, Germany. Karl's interest in various mechanisms was likely influenced by his father, a train driver, who died from an illness contracted in the exposed cab of his train when Karl was only two years old. It's worth noting that the inventor's childhood was fraught with challenges. Having lost her husband prematurely, Frau Benz was left to fend for herself and her son. Yet she persevered, working diligently to ensure her only child wouldn't suffer from poverty and could receive an education. Karl accepted in his studies, and given that his grandfathers and great-grandfathers were blacksmiths, who, historically, were adept as craftsmen, designers, technologists, and engineers, this lineage only helped solidify Carl's future path. In his youth, Benz became fascinated with photography and the repair of wall clocks, demonstrating early on his deafness with tools. At the age of 15, Carl graduated from grammar school in Karlsruhe, and then on July 9, 1864, at the age of 19, he completed his studies at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the Polytechnic Institute. Following this, he commenced work at a mechanical engineering plant. Despite enjoying his work, Benz resigned after two years as a mechanic. Driven by a preference for leading and designing, facets his factory job could not satisfy. Having understood the value of money from an early age, Carl never shied away from arduous and demanding tasks. For several more years, he was employed at various small firms in Karlsruhe, Mannheim, and Vienna, while also taking on side jobs in repair shops and agricultural equipment production factories. Although Benz diligently worked as a hired laborer, he harbored aspirations of establishing his venture. Thus, in 1871, along with his associate August Ritter, Benz founded his first enterprise, a mechanical workshop that also handled the supply of building materials. Like any other entrepreneur, Carl dreamt of business success. But despite his best efforts, things didn't go as planned. The workshop received few orders and even less revenue, plunging the young owners into debt. When Ritter announced his intention to leave the struggling enterprise, it seemed like a death knell for the company. Though Carl implored him to stay, his partner remained unmoved. Left in a precarious position without enough funds to cover even the rent, Carl was shattered. However, he never lost faith in his vision. Above all, he nurtured the idea of creating an internal combustion engine. In a desperate move to save his fledgling company, Carl sought assistance from Carl Friedrich Ringer, the father of the young woman he was courting. Ringer, a carpenter by trade, was a pragmatic individual with a stable footing in life. Recognizing Carl's talent, determination, and entrepreneurial spirit, he extended a substantial loan. This financial lifeline enabled Carl Benz to buy out Ritter's share in the company, simultaneously cementing the bond between the Benz and Ringer families. By July 20, 1872, Carl Benz and Cecilie Bertha Ringer were united in marriage, with the bride's dowry essentially being the loan Carl had secured from his future father-in-law. It's worth noting that the union of Carl and Bertha Benz exemplified a harmonious partnership, enduring throughout their lives and blessing them with five children. Furthermore, 
Bertha's contribution to the genesis of the automobile was monumental. On several occasions, when Carl's company teetered on the brink of bankruptcy, Bertha intervened, offering not just emotional support, but also practical solutions. One particularly intriguing anecdote involves Bertha surreptitiously orchestrating the best advertisement for the first automobile, a story we will revisit shortly. With full control over the mechanical workshop, Carl Benz devoted himself to the development of internal combustion engines. While he intended to market these engines for agricultural and industrial applications, he concurrently harbored another ambition, the development of a self-propelled carriage. The journey to develop the first functional engine spanned more than six years. Carl Benz's milestone achievement came with the patent for a two-stroke gasoline engine on December 31, 1878. But this was just the beginning. Over the next three years, Benz pioneered numerous innovations, securing patents for now fundamental components such as a battery-powered ignition system, spark plug, accelerator, carburetor, and radiator for the engine's water cooling system. Subsequent developments even led to the creation of a clutch and a gearbox. While Carl was immersed in design and experimentation, the workshop stayed afloat by repairing agricultural machinery and horse-drawn wagons, barely sustaining the financial demands of his inventive pursuits. As Carl reflected in later years, we were desperately short of money, but my wife never cast blame. Instead, she embraced many sacrifices and consistently provided her support. Initially, engineers utilized alcohol as fuel, but its rapid evaporation and poor performance in cold temperatures proved problematic. It was Carl who made the pioneering decision to employ gasoline as fuel. The first operational prototype of the engine was completed and successfully tested in 1879, propelling Benz towards a succession of new triumphs. After three and a half years of relentless work, Carl Benz founded what would become widely recognized as Benz and CE. Building upon his workshop's foundations and the groundbreaking patents already to his name. To facilitate this, he brought several shareholders on board and invested in a modest bicycle workshop. It was within these confines that Benz initiated the mass production of gasoline engines, continuously refining the designs over the subsequent three years. By 1882, the burgeoning company was manufacturing and distributing 200 engines a month, with Carl Benz working tirelessly alongside his employees. Intriguingly, the genesis of the automobile might never have occurred had Benz not endeavored to construct a self-propelled carriage for his wife, who struggled with traversing the town. Employing a tricycle framework fitted with bicycle wheels, Benz engineered a steering mechanism for the front wheels, manipulated by a horizontally positioned handle. The innovative four-stroke gasoline engine was nestled under the seat, positioned above the rear axle, with torque conveyed to the rear axle via a rudimentary bicycle chain. Despite its capricious nature and reliability issues, this invention was, in essence, the world's first automobile. Throughout 1886, this motor wagon was subjected to rigorous road tests. True to form, Benz patented his revolutionary creation, recording the vehicle's weight at approximately 220 pounds. The automobile could achieve speeds of up to 10 miles per hour and boasted a fuel tank capacity of roughly 1.2 gallons. On July 3, 1886, German newspapers heralded the debut of a horseless carriage on the streets of Mannheim, christened the Benz Patent Motor Wagon Model 1. Spurred by the success of his functional prototype, Benz devoted himself to enhancing the vehicle's technical aspects. Within just six months, he commenced the production and commercial distribution of an advanced iteration, Model 2. Initially, Carl and his wife, Bertha, utilized the pioneering motorized carriage for personal errands. However, in 1887, Benz's creation was showcased at the World's Fair in Paris, but it scarcely drew the anticipated interest. From 1886 to 1888, Benz found buyers for only one car within Germany. This tepid reception set the stage for a momentous event that would ultimately grip headlines worldwide. Dismayed by the public's indifference, Bertha Benz took matters into her own hands, conceiving a simple yet audacious plan. Without prior discussion with her husband, she commandeered the automobile, 
enlisted her sons Richard and Eugen, and embarked on an unprecedented voyage from Mannheim to Fordsheim to visit her mother. This landmark expedition, undertaken on August 5, 1888, marked the world's first long-distance automobile journey, stretching over 65 miles, which Bertha surmounted by sunset. Navigating the novel terrain, she procured the essential gasoline from pharmacies, where it was stocked as a cleaning solvent. Resourcefulness defined her journey. She commissioned a cobbler to mend the deteriorating brakes with leather, solicited a blacksmith when the drive chain succumbed, employed her hairpin to unclog a fuel line, and even substituted a malfunctioning ignition insulator with her garter. The arduous ascents, which necessitated manual pushing of the vehicle, prompted Bertha to suggest upon her return that Carl consider a system for altering the engine's torque, leading to Benz's innovation of the first practical automobile transmission. Bertha Benz's audacious feat catapulted her to international recognition, generating buzz across Europe and redefining public perception of Benz's invention. Consequently, 1889 saw the debut of an enhanced Model 3. Alerted to competing advancements by fellow German innovators Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach, Benz responded by diversifying into the realm of four-wheeled automobiles. As early as 1893, Benz introduced a four-wheeled model known as the Victoria, Benz Victoria, equipped with a three-horsepower engine and capable of reaching speeds up to 12 miles per hour. This innovation was advantageous for Carl Benz, and within just one year, 45 of these cars were sold. A crucial element in this success was advertising. Benz and Ampsi made a significant impression when their automobiles participated in car races starting in 1894. That same year, the chief editor of the Parisian newspaper Le Petit Journal organized the first automobile race in history, from Paris to Rouen. The race was open to all vehicles with at least three wheels and an engine. Out of 102 initial applicants, only 25 cars made it to the qualifying rounds. Among them was Emil Roger, driving a Benz's latest model, the Velo. Although Roger finished 14th, he was awarded the fifth prize of 500 francs. From that point forward, the vehicle Roger drove was viewed as a sports car. As Benz and Amp St. CEA grew, so did the expectations of the emerging fan base for Benz branded automobiles. However, in 1901, with the debut of the Mercedes 35 GP, it became evident that the company was not keeping pace with modern advancements. In an effort to address this, a French engineer, Marius Barbaro, was brought on board. The initial collaboration between Barbaro and Benz was fraught with tension, as Barbaro was reluctant to conform to Benz's visions and Benz was resistant to Barbaro's proposed innovations. The internal conflict reached a peak leading Benz to distance himself from day-to-day -day operations, entrusting the company's direction to Barbaro. This decision had far-reaching consequences, as it soon became clear that Barbaro was not equipped to manage the responsibilities or live up to the expectations that accompanied his role. The company's trajectory started to turn around only with the hiring of German engineer Hans Nibel. Under Nibel's leadership, the company developed one of the world's first and most famous racing cars, the Blitzen Benz, which boasted an engine power of 200 horsepower. In the post-World War I era, numerous new automobile models emerged, sustaining production success until the mid-1920s. By 1926, Mercedes had manufactured 47,555 vehicles, featuring models like the Mercedes 35 GP, Mercedes Simplex, and others. However, the aftermath of the war significantly impacted the company. Economic instability, currency devaluation, and intense competition from successful manufacturers like Ford Motor Company led to a period of stagnation for Mercedes. Seeking revival, two former rivals, DMG, Daimler Motor and Gesellschaft, and Benz and Seat, merged on June 28, 1926, forming Daimler Benz AG. Contrary to the original statement, it wasn't Ferdinand Porsche who took over as the leader after the merger. The management was undertaken by Wilhelm Kissel and other board members. However, Porsche, working as the head of the motor vehicle design department, did contribute significantly to the company. One of the first notable designs post-merger was the Mercedes-Benz Type 400, among others. It's also accurate that from this point forward, automobiles were sold under the Mercedes-Benz brand. Ferdinand Porsche 
left the company around 1928, and Hans Neibel, along with other engineers, took over the technical leadership, influencing the design and production of several models, including the Mannheim 370 and Nürburg 500. The early 1930s saw the introduction of iconic models like the Mercedes-Benz 770W07 and the Mercedes 170. In 1935, another significant figure, Max Saylor, didn't take over as the company's designer. However, during this period, Mercedes-Benz did achieve a milestone by introducing the 260D, the world's first series production diesel car, in 1936. And the new large Mercedes-Benz 770 W150 was indeed a model from that era. World War II profoundly affected Daimler-Benz, repurposing automotive production toward the war effort. The company suffered extensive damage from aerial bombardments, significantly impacting operations. Post-war statements in 1945 suggested a bleak outlook, with the company acknowledging the substantial destruction of their facilities. The road to recovery was arduous. By May 1949, Daimler-Benz undertook a significant modernization process, though initially continuing with older designs due to circumstances affecting sales. The company's turnaround began in the early 1950s with the introduction of improved models like the Mercedes-Benz 220 W187 and the 190 WW191, which indeed helped re-establish its market position. These models laid the groundwork for the company's subsequent growth, eventually making it a leading automobile manufacturer in Western Europe by the mid-20th century. After World War II, Mercedes-Benz recommenced production focusing notably on the luxury segment. This re-emergence was spectacularly highlighted with the unveiling of the Mercedes-Benz 300 W186 at the 1951 Paris Motor Show. Esteemed for its elegance and engineering, the Adenauer Mercedes, unofficially named after Konrad Adenauer, the first chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany who used this model extensively, garnered acclaim among elite businessmen, celebrities, and politicians. In 1954, an updated version, the 300B, featured enhancements like new brake drums and front vent windows. By 1955, the 300C iteration marked a significant upgrade with the introduction of an automatic transmission, underlining the brand's commitment to innovation and luxury. During the same period, Mercedes-Benz expanded its range to offer models that were reliable yet more economical to maintain. This strategy was evident with the W120, W121 Ponton models, continuing until the early 1960s. Among these, the W180, particularly the 220A version, stood out boasting an engine with 89 horsepower. Production of the larger Ponton 220 series continued until September 1959, forming a robust platform for future model developments. By 1960, efficiencies had improved to the extent that, according to Daimler-Benz's analyses, the assembly of a single car required an average of only 25 hours. Parallel to their consumer models, Mercedes-Benz also made a triumphant return to motor racing. In 1952, the company introduced the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL W194, which achieved significant success, including a second and fourth place finish in that year's Mille Miglia. However, it was the Mercedes-Benz W196, driven by the legendary Argentine driver Juan Manuel Fangio, that dominated Formula One racing in 1954 and 1955. In 1955, the enhanced Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR W196 S racing car, bearing the iconic number 722, triumphed in the Mille Miglia with a record that still stands. Moreover, the 1950s saw the advent of the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL W198, a production model inspired by the W194 racing version. Prominent U.S. importer Max Hoffman had suggested this model, recognizing a market among affluent American consumers. Upon its release in 1954, it captivated automotive enthusiasts, especially in the United States, where a significant portion of the models was sold, often for record prices. Further development led to the launch of the W111 series in 1959, debuted at the Frankfurt Motor Show. 
While this model retained the reliable chassis of the pontons, it introduced a more contemporary design with distinctive tail fins and a more refined front end with vertical headlights. Safety, comfort, and a classical elegance were central to the W111's design ethos. The spacious interior, coupled with upscale finishes, including soft material dashboard and steering wheel coverings, marked a new era of luxury for the brand. In 1961, Mercedes-Benz marked a significant transition, concluding the era of the iconic Ponton models and the luxurious hand-assembled W189-300D Adenauer Landala. While the 300 SL indeed encapsulated the grandeur of its limousine counterparts, it was the introduction of the W100, 600, that truly carried on the Landolitz legacy. This nearly 20-foot-long limousine, renowned for its opulence, featured cutting-edge amenities like in-car entertainment and sophisticated air suspension. Propelling the W100 was the formidable M100 engine, a 6.3-liter behemoth churning out 250 horsepower. This powerhouse could propel the stately vehicle to speeds up to 127 miles per hour, rivaling the performance of contemporary sports cars like the Porsche 911 and earning the distinction of being one of the fastest vehicles in West Germany at the time. Its popularity was so enduring that production extended into the 1980s. As West Germany's economic clout burgeoned during the 1960s and 1970s, Mercedes-Benz solidified its stature within the nation's automotive industry. The brand became synonymous with exemplary engineering with a significant proportion of its models captivating international markets. The era's design trends evolved, gradually phasing out the distinctive fins and ushering in a new age of luxury epitomized by models like the Pagoda SL W113. The early 1970s marked another pivotal shift for Mercedes-Benz, the introduction of a new vehicle classification system. Designations now included prefixes like R for Roadster, C for Coupe, S for sedan, and V for limousines, vehicles with extended wheelbases. This period witnessed the transition from the beloved Pagoda to the R107 SL, and the inauguration of a new S-Class generation with the W116. 1979 heralded the debut of the W126 S-Class, a model that redefined automotive luxury. Masterminded by renowned designer Bruno Sacco, the W126 emphasized aerodynamic efficiency, a departure from previous design norms. The model's acclaim was unprecedented, with around 840,000 units produced over its 12-year lifespan, a record unbeaten by any subsequent S-Class series. The origin story of the venerable G-Wagon is indeed fascinating. Initially conceived as a military vehicle, it was tailored to the specifications of the Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. However, following the 1979 Iranian Revolution, the Shah was deposed and the contract fell through. Mercedes-Benz astutely repurposed the vehicle for the civilian market, resulting in an SUV renowned for its ruggedness and off-road prowess. Simultaneously, Mercedes-Benz expanded its portfolio with models like the compact W201, 190, and the mid-sized W124, offered in several body styles. The late 1980s saw the introduction of the R129 SL, a worthy successor to the R107. The G-Wagon, meanwhile, continued to evolve with new iterations like the W461 and W463, the latter of which remains in production, testament to its enduring legacy. In 1993, Mercedes-Benz undertook a critical overhaul of its vehicle naming system. The traditional classification, once centered on engine capacity and limited model variations, was revamped. Notable changes included the renaming of the Sonder class, Special class, to the more streamlined S class, while Sport Light, Sport Lightweight, and Gelendewagen, off-road vehicle, were rebranded as the SL class and G class, respectively. Additionally, specific letters now denoted engine types, with E representing Einspritz motor, fuel injection, and D indicating diesel engines. The mid-1990s heralded further innovation, particularly with the 1995 introduction of the E-Class W210. This model distinguished itself through a more economical design approach, setting it apart within the Mercedes portfolio. 
One of Mercedes-Benz's landmark corporate maneuvers occurred in 1999 when it officially acquired the high-performance tuning company AMG, signaling a commitment to expanding its range into sportier, high-performance domains. The strategic acquisition complemented the release of new models within the S-Class and CL-Class, represented by the W220 and C215, respectively. However, the culmination of the 1990s was somewhat bittersweet. While the brand successfully doubled its model offerings, this expansion seemingly came at the expense of its renowned quality. Customers encountered uncharacteristic reliability issues, particularly with interior components, somewhat tarnishing the brand's sterling reputation. Entering the new millennium, Mercedes-Benz sought to redefine itself, focusing particularly on high-performance models. The early 2000s saw the introduction of the powerful SL55 AMG. Equipped with a supercharged 5.5-liter V8 engine capable of nearly 500 horsepower, the era also witnessed substantial upgrades across existing lines, including the W211 and W209 series. 2005 marked another generational shift for the prestigious automaker. The debut of the W221 and C216 models within the S-Class and CL-Class respectively showcased Mercedes-Benz's nod to retro styling. These vehicles boasted broader wheel arches, increased dimensions, and more spacious interiors, signifying a blend of luxury and performance that had always characterized the brand. Following the rejuvenation of the S-Class, attention turned to refreshing the C-Class. This endeavor materialized with the launch of the W204, a model that continued Mercedes-Benz's commitment to combining technical innovation with stylistic evolution. The introduction of these models underscored the brand's resilience and its continuous push towards luxury, comfort, and driving performance, despite the challenges of the previous decade. As the 2000s progressed, Mercedes-Benz continued to innovate, broadening its influence in the automotive industry. In a strategic move to expand its market reach, the company unveiled two new SUV classes, the GL Class X164, a sophisticated extension of the W164 M Class, made its grand entry, marking the brand's foothold in the luxury SUV segment. Not long after, the Jul K Class X204 was introduced, a mid-size SUV that inherited its chassis from the S204 C Class station wagon, reflecting Mercedes-Benz's commitment to versatility and luxury. 2008 became a landmark year in the brand's illustrious history. Mercedes-Benz was heralded as a pioneer in manufacturing commercial vehicles, integrating advanced technology into its designs. This innovation was exemplified by the Mercedes Actros, which featured an intelligent control device that monitored systemware, revolutionizing vehicle maintenance. Additionally, drivers experienced unprecedented comfort with a cabin boasting soft air suspension and adaptable steering adjustments. The decade culminated with the debut of the E-Class W212 in 2009, underlining the brand's penchant for elegance and state-of-the-art engineering. Mercedes-Benz's prestige attracted an exclusive clientele, propelling several aftermarket companies into prominence. These specialists, including the now in-house division AMG, as well as independent entities like Brabus, Lorenzer, and Kleeman, offered bespoke customization, transforming luxury vehicles into personalized masterpieces. By 2015, Mercedes-Benz had soared to new heights, with a brand value soaring to approximately $35 billion. This staggering figure cemented its position as a juggernaut in the automotive sector, trailing only Toyota among car manufacturers and ranking 10th globally across all industries. Beyond its commercial triumphs, Mercedes-Benz harbors a rich cultural legacy. Contrary to popular belief, the Mercedes moniker originated not from Carl Benz's lineage, but was a tribute to Mercedes Jelinek, the daughter of Emil Jelinek a vital Daimler associate. The iconic three-pointed star ensconced in a laurel wreath symbolized Daimler's ambition for dominance on land, sea, and air, a vision shared and continued by Benz. The brand's reputation for safety and luxury garnered a distinguished clientele, including heads of state and industry magnates. A testament to its armored vehicle's reliability occurred in 1998 when a Mercedes S600 potentially saved the Georgian president from an assassination attempt. 
surviving an onslaught of bullets and grenade blasts. Even Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, held an affinity for the brand, famously driving his Mercedes SL55 AMG plateless due to a legal loophole he ingeniously exploited. Moreover, the exclusivity of Mercedes-Benz ownership is legendary, with the Mercedes-Benz 770, or Big Mercedes, being one of the most illustrious models, associated with historical figures such as Adolf Hitler, Emperor Hirohito, and even the Pope. Furthermore, the brand's history is steeped in tradition, exemplified by AMG's motto, One Man, One Engine, ensuring accountability and excellence in craftsmanship as each mechanic personally signs off on the engine they've assembled. In his later years, Carl Benz stepped back from the business world, basking in his impeccable reputation as the founding father of modern automobility. He passed away on April 4, 1929, due to pneumonia in Ladenburg at the age of 84. His wife, Bertha Benz, survived him by many years, passing away on May 5, 1944. By the time of Carl Benz's death in 1929, approximately 30 million cars were already traversing roads worldwide. Today, that number has soared to more than 500 million passenger vehicles. Mercedes-Benz has never been a brand for the mass market. Approximately 2 million new vehicles bearing the famed three-pointed star are introduced to the market each year, signifying the brand's elite status. This exclusivity was underscored at the end of the 20th century, when Daimler-Benz merged with the American corporation Chrysler to strengthen its foothold in the USA. Unfortunately, this merger led to the omission of Benz from the car's designation, leaving only the mythical name Mercedes. Despite this, the legacy of Carl Benz, the pioneering inventor, endures in human history. His invention sparked countless inquiries into who created the automobile and the story behind it, securing his place in the annals of history. Carl Benz's story serves as a beacon of inspiration, showcasing how dedication to innovation can forge legacies that resonate for centuries and influence everyday lives worldwide. His steadfastness, despite various challenges, stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless spirit of creation and innovation. What do you think about Mercedes cars and what is your favorite model? Write your opinion in the comments. Be sure to watch other episodes about car brands and more on our YouTube channel. We hope you liked the video. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. This will only take a tenth of a second, but will surely pump the YouTube algorithm to bring our videos to the top. See you in the next video.